Hi everyone, Chris Petri here. Welcome. Thanks for coming by. We're going to have a really fun time. We're going to actually create four different compositions here. Um, the main idea of our uh, tutorial today is um, mixing lots of uh, interesting colors. So we can see here we did um, a lot of mixtures of greens and yellows with a little bit of earthy colors like browns and blues mixed in there for some shadowing for our tree and our bushes. Here we did an ocean scene. We explained how we created wonderful mixtures of colors to do our ocean, uh, getting uh, the distant darker ocean here and then uh, lighting, uh, lightening it up here as we come into the foreground with our ocean and lots of white paper and some splashes. Then we moved on and we did a beautiful red flower here. We started to warm up our colors a little bit. Here's a little cooler on this side. Then over here we did some beautiful, we did a beautiful red flower in a vase with some green for, leafy forms. A lot of fun. This one was really fun to do. And then this one here, warmer colors too. Again, the sunset, beautiful purple and blue in the sky up here and then reds and oranges all the way through with um, a first glazing and then we let it dry 100% and then we came over and did our darker washes over top. So we did a glazing technique here pretty much and then these here we painted pretty much a la prima. Um, we did a little bit of glazing here too I think with the ocean scene. So you're going to get a good feel for different uh, methods and processes with watercolor on this tutorial and as well you're going to be able to kind of learn how to mix. We show you how to put all your colors out in your palette. So this is for the extreme beginners. You're just starting out. How do you mix colors? That was the main idea we started out with when we first created this video was what colors are we going to mix? How are we going to mix colors? How do we figure out what colors we need for our paintings? And we show you everything here step by step as we go with each of these paintings so that you kind of get a feel for mixing colors um, and also um, using uh, the composition method of breaking things down into smaller parts smaller compositions first and then as you build up your um, practice on these type of compositions eventually you're creating larger paintings with all of these together uh, in one painting. Okay so we'll get started in just a second and again thanks so much for watching and um, we'll see you in just a second we'll start our pencil drawings and our compositions. Okay welcome everybody Again, Chris Petra here. We're back. We're uh, working along here on the um, Extreme Beginner series. I'm just spritzing some water onto my palette here. It's always good to keep our um, palette clean. So I would say each time before you start a new painting, you're always going to want to take a spritzer bottle. Or, you know, if you want to, you can just splash on some water with a brush. You know, you dip your brush in water and just splash on some water. Or you just wet a paper towel and wipe it down. But that's the best way to go. Um, when you start a new painting, uh, you start a new exercise, a new composition as you're working, you just clean up your palette each time as you go, and you also clean your palette as you're working through a painting. You wouldn't want to keep keep mixing over and over and over the same colors or different colors and mixes in your palette without keeping your palette clean, because you want your colors fresh, clean, um, vibrant, exciting looking. Um, we don't want to muddy up our colors too much. Sometimes you will want to create maybe a, a very interesting painting with some a lot of different mixtures of colors and grays and lots of blends like that. Well, that's fine. Then, then you might leave some colors left in your palette. But for the most part, a good rule of thumb is keep your palette clean at first. Then as you get better and more experienced at watercolor, then you can sometimes leave some stuff in your palette to mix up some grayish colors and some, you know, kind of muddy looking colors, you know, all that looks good. It all depends on your style, but a good rule of thumb is always try to keep your palette clean, you know, all the time before you paint every time, especially before you start a new painting or new exercises, keep that palette clean, you know, get, we used a paper towel and a spritzer bottle, that's all. Or you can just wet a paper towel with some fresh clean water and just clean up the palette a little bit. This way you have a nice, fresh, clean working surface. And then on this video, you just saw the finished uh, painting that we did, a composition I should say, not really a painting so much, but um, we're doing color mixes. People ask me, Chris, uh, uh, what do I use for colors? How do I mix colors? Um, is there color theory? Um, you know, different things like that. And trust me, as a watercolor artist, 
I tried um, learning about like all the color wheel, using colors, you know, mixing grays, all these different types of things. As a new watercolor artist, you're, you're just starting out. I think the best uh, mindset you want to have is try to use a lot of colors, like, so you don't want to just stick with one color. Like if you're going to make trees or bushes, you, you wouldn't want to just go in and get like one green color and just do your bushes all in that one green. You're going to want to mix it up. The key is variety is good in watercolor. So if you can remember that, variety is good. Variety of colors, that's good. Also warm and cool everywhere. You know, if you're going to make some greens, make some greens and some yellows. Warm and cool. You know, green's kind of cool. Warm, a yellow is warm. So we're going to cover this. So you'll kind of see a good foundational way to paint with your colors and how you're going to mix your colors. And I guess the main thing I would say is if you're painting um, from photographs or if you're painting outdoors and you're painting from live scenes or you're painting from books, whatever it is, you just want to try to match what you are seeing out there, whatever you're painting from, your source, your your subject matter, your reference, your reference photos or your reference material. Try to use that and as well try to spice it up. Try to add some more liveliness to things. Maybe not do things so literal. If you see a grass field, you know, maybe instead of just using one green like this for a grass field, just say, oh yeah, that grass field is green. Maybe you're going to want to, even if it doesn't look as much like there's some yellow in that grass field, maybe put some yellow in that grass field. Make it a little more interesting, you know? You get a couple different greens going on that. It's going to make the painting look more lively, more interesting. So the thing is, you always want to think of how do you take your what you're doing and kind of spice it up, make it more exciting, live, you know, liven it up, um, get more creative with it, um, you know, kind of get things, ex you know, make things exciting. Um, so let's try it out. Let's try our first. I'll just get a, a pencil here and we're going to do, um, maybe we'll do a tree and some bushes. So let's try a tree and some bushes. So I'm just going to try a, maybe a field here, like across there. And maybe I'll just do a nice tree like so. I'm just doing a, a interesting tree trunk here. So you can do this at home, you know, at your studio, at your home. And you can see I'm just doing some branches here, nothing fancy. So I just did a tree trunk here and then some branches branching out. Like so. And there we have a tree shape with some tree trunk, tree limbs, some branches. And I think that looks fine. Now we're going to take the idea of let's liven this up, make this interesting with our greens because we're going to make these green leaves in here. Next thing we would say is uh, you'll see on most of my videos, probably all of them or almost all of them, you're going to see me try to point out the fact that you want to sort of figure out where your light's coming from. So let's pretend we're, do, we're just doing a composition here, so no, no worries. We're not stressing out at all. We're just having a fun time here. We're going to take and make our light insignia like this, which is a little lamp. We're making a little lamp with a light bulb in there, a bright light bulb. And that's going to be our light insignia. So we're going to know that when we're painting these trees over here, and then we'll do some bushes down here too, the light's coming from over here and shining this way, going across the scene like this. The light. You always want to kind of put your little lamp, your little lamp insignia icon on your painting to just remember so you can always reference and go, where's my light coming from? I'm painting a part of my painting and I, I forgot where I need to put the shadow. Oh, quickly, I look up here and go, there it is. Can you see that? Once you put that light insignia on your tape, your tape border, You'll, you'll have that, and you'll just always reference that as you're painting through your painting, or drawing too. Okay, so now we'll get our brushes here. I'm going to use the, we're using the Prang watercolor set, and again, this is the paint set here. 
with water with extreme beginners watercolor you're not you don't have to go out and spend a lot of money a hundred dollars on a palette uh, another hundred dollars on paints when you're starting out you start out real humble real simple a nice prang oval 16 paint set like this and that's all you need to start out to start getting your feet wet with watercolors and it comes with a brush this brush here it's right in here all you need so I just have a, a canteen to my right with some water in it fresh clean water and a sponge I can dry my brush off on my sponge all the time so anytime I rinse my brush I tap it on my small piece of sponge that I cut from a larger piece of sponge you could also use paper towels or tissues whatever you want I often often hold the tissue in my hand in my left hand like this and then dry off my brush like that too so let's start doing our tree and then we're, re we're remembering our lights on this side so our lighter let's say our more brighter colors are going to be on the right side now this is where we get with mixing colors we're doing a tree with leaves let's call this springtime springtime lots of colors vibrant green more green here look green there yellow lots of beautiful vibrant yellow there we go and then maybe some uh, cooler green over here which is down here some cooler green and then even still a little bit of brown let's mix in a little bit of brown there earthy colors so now you can see with our tree, we're going to have all these mixtures of colors. That's going to look exciting, right? Can you see that? We're not just going in and getting one green and going, okay, let's paint a tree. Here we go. Oh, look at that. Woo, tree. Nice. Yeah. All one color. No. Uh, you want to do it, mix it all. Different. Exciting. Lots of color. Darker green. Medium green. Rinse off the brush, dry off the brush, go in, get some yellow, yellow over here. Then we go down here and get some even cooler blue. It's almost like a, a Viridian. If you're used to working with uh, Viridian, that's the Viridian kind of look down here with this color there. And then a little bit of brown, bringing some earthy kind of tones to it. And there you have it. Look at all those wonderful colors you have. So this is what I'm saying when you're mixing colors and color theory or if you're just thinking let's mix a lot of exciting colors into it, you're going to be fine. And especially with greens with trees and bushes and things, you know, you're always going to be safe going with the greens and the yellows. This is the sunlight area. And then if you dip your hand in some paint and you make some paint over here, no big deal. I just... I wipe my hand off a little bit like that. Then maybe I say, oh, that's, let's try to scrub a little bit of that off. I dip some paper towels in water. And I try to blot this up a little bit. And that does not look too bad. Look at that. A little bit of a damp paper towel and you just, you can wipe up that little bit of an issue. Not a big deal. And if also, if you want to fail, if you don't want to have that problem, the alternative to that issue and that problem you might have is you take printer paper and you put printer paper down on the areas you're not working on like that. See how I did that? Printer paper? Printer paper, printer paper. I sec you can see how I sectioned this off, four, four sections of my watercolor paper with tape, artist tape, uh, that's a drafting tape. Well, if you don't want to smudge and get uh, little nasties on your paper, no big deal. You just put some paper on there. Then you just go and tape a couple spots, it doesn't have to be fancy. A couple pieces of uh, your artist tape, your drafting tape, frog tape, whatever you have. And there you go. Problem solved. Don't stress. Make a mess and don't stress. Doesn't matter. OK. 
Okay, so we're back to painting. <laughs> we're having a little bit of issues here, no big deal. All right, now we're gonna splash. I dip my um, brush in some fresh, clean water. I come over here and I add some water and paint. And I splash some paint on there. That's leaves. When you splash on your paint like that, that's nice leaf color, you know, leaf shapes. Then you can do some finger painting. Just tap your finger onto the paper like that. Then some darker greens over here. This is the darker. And I'm just using my round brush that came with the set. Nothing fancy. You can see how nice that point is on that brush. An acrylic, oh, this is a synthetic brush, which means it holds less water. It doesn't hold a lot of water, so you're already ahead of the game if you're using synthetic brushes, if you're a beginner anyway. And then I'm going to do some more splashing with some of that grayish brown and green. And then let's get some more medium green. There we go. And we're going to leave... We're going to leave whole, we're going to leave like white paper in here and there. So we wouldn't want to fill in the whole thing with just one big blob of paint. Can you see how I kind of left white paper? Leave lots of white paper in between your leaves on your tree. That's going to look really great. If you can remember that one thing, when you paint trees, you want areas where the birds can fly through. <laughs> okay, leave spots where those birds can just go zipping right through there. Because you know birds do that, right? When you see birds, sometimes they fly right through the holes in the trees. They don't even stop. They just go right through. <laughs> so have fun with this, all right? Don't get stressed over this. You're just having fun. We're just doing a little more splashing. Okay, and then now maybe we're going to do some... Uh, well, let's take some orange, some like dark orange, because we have light orange and dark orange. Let's take some dark or light orange and some brown. And then maybe some yellow. And then maybe some blue. And then we're just going to do our tree trunk here. And let's do that. Real simple. You just keep your hand down on the paper like this. Make sure your hand is resting on your watercolor paper, but you don't want to lean in any paint. But we don't have any paint over here. Just a little tidbit of information. I'm sorry I didn't mention this before. If you're a right-handed artist, you're going to have your right hand on the right and you're going to paint your paintings left to right like this. If you're a left-handed artist, then you're going to start your paintings over on the right side and work to your left. So this way you're not leaning into your, your paint at all. Does that make sense? Can you see that? So I'm a right-handed artist. I'm going to start always my paintings, my compositions, my little sketch work here. I'm going to do it left to right so and then I'm just gonna do this I'm gonna I'm gonna make my uh, I'm just gonna make my uh, tree trunks and tree limbs and branches and twigs and things and then over here is the light remember we said the lights coming from this direction so now this is the fun part you take your brush you rinse off your brush you dry it off on your paper towel or your sponge, but paper, paper towel or tissue works good too. And then you just kind of soften this right side over here of the tree trunk so that you don't have to... And that's all you do is you just really use the paint that's already on there on the dark side of the left side of the tree trunk and you just blend it out over here and then it gives like that nice light effect on the right side of that. I think that looks pretty good. Now let's do a little more greens down here. Maybe there's some grass down here. And again, you're going to want to mix up your greens. Dark, you can dark green. This is the dark, dark. Well, this is somewhat dark green. This is even darker yet over here. You can do this one over here. And you go, you know, dark to light. So dark, dark, dark green here. Rinse off your brush. Dry it off a little bit on your tissue. Go into the medium green here then you rinse off your brush again dry it off on the tissue or the sponge and then you go into your medium green over here so now you have three greens working out on your palette you want to have your palette all set up like this where you just start putting your colors down dark to light 
kind of organize it a little bit. You could organize it any way you want, really. You could go right to left with dark to light, or, you know, you can mix it any way you want to do it. But the thing is, put your paints down first into your palette, then you work your colors into your painting. So this way you're thinking about it first, like, oh, what colors am I going to use? Oh, well, let me put them into my palette first. Dark green. I'm using all greens for the tree. So I go dark green here, medium green here, light green over here, rinse my brush, and then I go to my yellow over here, make my yellow over here, and there you have it. You have four, look at that, that's color. Again, color mixing. How do you use colors? Color mixing. Mix up lots of colors. Don't go with boring one color the whole way, right? Then we put some brown and some medium orange. And that's for our earthy kind of colors. We'll just mix a little bit in there. And I think that looks good for that. And then we add for our grass. And here we go. We mix all our greens and just kind of go across there like that. Wow, isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Look at that. That is fantastic. And you just get in there and... Have fun, don't stress. Again, the watercolor is all about having fun. You don't want to... You want to have always fun times. And another great thing about watercolor, I think one of the... One of the people in the... Com one of the um, very... Very kind people in the comments section mentioned about colors and painting and techniques and things. One of your best ways to approach watercolor, especially when you're just starting out, and I this is what I did when I started out, is I just got to the point where I was so frustrated in the beginning because it seemed like anytime I tried something, it wasn't coming out good. And I said, I can't figure out why I can't paint a painting. I was trying to paint like a full painting. You know, maybe it was like an eight and a half by 11 size painting and I was trying to paint the whole thing and it was every time I would try it, it just things were going wrong. I couldn't figure out what it was. Then I figured maybe after a year of doing that, I figured let me try something different. And then I started doing small compositions of just one thing. So maybe for about a month or two, I started just painting like trees all the time. And I just started figuring out how am I going to paint a tree looking good here? And I started trying out different trees. And then I would look on YouTube and figure out what artists were painting trees. And I would try to find out how they did them, and I would practice a few different artist styles. Then I figured out a couple books and photographs from online, and I tried to copy those. And eventually I just, after painting a couple months of nothing but trees and just trying to figure out how to do those, I finally got to like a really good spot where I find out I found out how to paint a good tree. Like I just practiced it enough and over and over and over and over, and it turned out that I was able to start to get the feel for how to make a decent looking tree here. So that's all we're doing is to try to practice this over and over until you kind of get the feel for it and then you should be fine. So that's a, a tree. It looks okay. And, and there's many kind of styles of trees you can paint too. So you might try one like this and then we might try like a pine tree and then maybe we might try like some bushes. Let's try some bushes. Those are a little bit easier. Not quite a full tree. Let's do the same thing. Darks. Dark green. Rinse off the brush. Tap on the tissue. Medium green. Rinse off the brush. Tap on the tissue. Light green. Rinse off the brush. Tap on the tissue. Yellow. There we go. Now, let's try our bush. So our bush is going to be over here. Let's do a quick pencil rendering. Just so we kind of... Okay, so we got a tree here. Let's do a bush over here. Like that. Okay, so I just did a little quick pencil drawing. So I kind of get a feel for where I want to paint. And there we go. Let's do some paint. Darker green on the left. The light's coming from this way. So the darker green's over here, and the light is, maybe we could do a couple of finger taps here and there. Then we're doing some lighter greens over here where the tops of the bushes are. So 
So the tops of the bushes are catching the light from above. And then down below, a little bit of brown maybe too. A little bit of earthy colors there. A little bit of dark green. And then I blend that in, and there you see how we have it. Maybe I do a little bit of splashing with the light green, with the uh, kind of like that light yellow. I do a little bit of splashing over here just to give a little more excitement. There we go. And there we go. And then we could do even a little shadowing over here. So let's do some brown, maybe a little bit of blue. And a little bit of shadowing along the bottom of the bush. Just a little bit of shadow feel. Doesn't have to be too much. And the same thing here with the tree. A little bit of that blue mixture here, blue and brown. Like that. Just a little bit of that blue and brown to make some shadow. And then let's do a little sky, sky wash. Tiny bit of sky wash. And let's, let's change brushes. Let's use a square brush. You know what? Let's use a larger round brush. Simply Simmons number six. I'm going to simply wet the brush and do a very simple, just one blue here. Just one blue color. Here I'm going with a more simple feel. Here we use tons of greens. We use some earthy colors. We use some browns. And then here for the sky wash, just blue. And I just kind of scrub it on a little bit here and there, cross the way here. Don't, uh, I would say please don't, don't get too close to your trees and bushes with your blue paint. Try to paint, unless you let it dry 100%. So this is a good time to leave it dry, then come back and put in your blue. I'm, I'm doing it a little dangerously here with the blue paint while um, we're this is still drying. Can you see that? So while the bushes are drying and the tree is drying with the green paint, leave that dry 100% and then come back in and add your blue. But I've been doing this a long time now, 15 years or more. I've been painting watercolors. I sometimes just go for it and do stuff like this, but you'd let this dry 100% before you go in and do your blue sky, otherwise it's going to get all jumbled up and messy. So don't do that. Don't follow what I'm doing right now. Make sure you let this all dry 100%, and then a little bit of orange at the bottom of the sky. Touch of orange, not much though. Just a little bit. And that's all we have to do, and it looks really good. Okay, we're going to come right back and have another fantastic time creating another composition here. We're doing mixing of colors. We're talking about how do you mix your colors. We are showing you that you're going to want to mix lots of colors. And it's not hard if you're going with trees all greens. How many greens do we have in our palette? One, two, three, and we add a little yellow, four. So for making greens, we could at least add one, two, three greens and a little bit of yellow, and that's four. And then we spiced it up a little bit and we got in some burnt umber or the darker brown color and some blue mixed in there too, to sort of, you know, make even a darker shadow type color like that. And there we have it. Okay, we'll be right back. I'm just going to take a quick break and we'll get started with our next painting, our next, our next composition. We're going to remove our tape here and our paper, our printer paper, 
so we can do our next couple compositions. We'll do three more. So the first one was our greens with our trees and bushes, and then next we're going to come with, come up with something really exciting. Well, let's do another something really cool and interesting. Maybe we'll use some different colors uh, than this here. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, we're hey we're back from a quick break. It's Chris again, and we're having a great time here doing our watercolors. We're doing small compositions here, and we sectioned off a piece of uh, watercolor paper into four. Uh, quadrants here. Um, so we did basically uh, four quadrants and we're doing composition in each of the quadrants of our paper. Great way to um, get a lot done and learn a lot about different techniques and methods and ways of doing things by just doing small compositions. And then, uh, you know, from there you can take these and parlay them into your paintings. So here we did a tree and we did some bushes. You know, I've done better bushes than those, but you know, trees came out pretty good. Uh, I think the bush shapes are a little, you know, I don't know, it looks kind of like a mountain, like, you know, out west or something in the western <laughs> United States. But uh, those bushes are good enough for me. I hope they're good enough for you. And let's continue on here. Let's work with some ocean water. Hey, everybody, <laughs> we all love ocean. The ocean, oh, exciting. Seascapes, boats, landscapes, all the beautiful things, but especially ocean water. Let's do ocean water here. And then we're talking about Mixing colors again. That was kind of like the theme of our uh, painting and compositions here. You know, I'm dipping my uh, paper towel in some water, fresh, clean water, and I'm just going to clean my palette like so. Again, each time I do a new painting or a new composition, I'm going to go in and start cleaning up the palette a little bit. So I did one swipe there, and then I'm going to do another with a dry paper towel since I, the other one was damp. I got all the loose paint up. Now I do a dry paper towel, and these are very inexpensive paper towels with no oils in them or anything, so it doesn't ruin the the effect of the palette, you know, if there's no bubbling of paint or anything like that, because I'm using paper towels with nothing but paper, there's no oils in them. If you buy fancy paper towels, expensive ones, they might have oil in them, and it leaves oil on your palette, and then your paint beads up and doesn't smooth out nice, so... Just a little tidbit of information as we're chatting about our palettes and our paper towels and so forth. Same thing with tissues, I should say. I use inexpensive tissues. Um, they're better because they don't have any oils in them. And the same thing when you're using tissues to clean up your palette, if you do that, or it, it's better to have inexpensive tissues with no oils in them. It, it tends not to affect the paints and in the, in the uh, paint uh, in the water, water and paints. All right, so now we said we're going to do some ocean. So let's do three quarters. So let's use our paper, our divisions. We're always saying, okay, where's our divisions? Um, thirds, one third, two thirds, three thirds. So we have one third up, two thirds up, three thirds up. Well, let's do our ocean, distant ocean horizon line, two thirds up on the paper here, like so. And then we'll do all the ocean here. And this will be the sky up here. And then uh, for the Light, I don't think we're going to be too concerned about the light right now because this could be more... We're not really going to see too much shadowing when we're painting ocean, just the ocean and the sea. So let's remember that. Just for a little tidbit of information, there's not too much shadowing really all that much in the ocean water. As far as our composition here goes. So now, let's create... Again, we're doing the ocean. The ocean the sky here, the deeper ocean out here where the horizon line is going, to, is going to be darker. So let's go in and we'll get some darker blues to start out with. So we'll go with this blue here. Very similar to like a French ultramarine blue. And then here we'll go with another blue, a little bit that looks more like a uh, Prussian blue. And then here's our green. So already, as we're doing our ocean colors, we're doing our green, we're doing our dark blue, looks like a French ultramarine pretty much, French ultramarine blue. Then we have our, um, let's see, we have dark green, French ultramarine blue, and then we have more or less like a Prussian blue here. 
So right away we're doing our ocean and we're, again, we're doing how do we mix colors. Chris, how do I mix colors? I'm just saying we're doing ocean water, so use all your blues. You have a lot of blues in this. You can even use green too. Use some greens in your ocean. Maybe the darker green would look a little better. We'll mix in some of that darker green. So for my ocean water, I'm going to use like a lot of greens and blues. Let's see, we got purple here. We'll use a little bit of purple too. We're going to use some brown. Yes, for that deep area of ocean, we're going to use some brown mixed in with some blue. So you can see my method here. My technique is I'm taking all my colors and putting them on the palette and keeping them separated so that I can kind of see them all out there on the palette. And then I work from there. All right, so that is really as simple as it, as it is. Okay, now I'm gonna start up here where the darkest part of the sea is, which is blue and brown. So then you just go across carefully, like so. I'm using my Simply, uh, Simply Simmons number six. You get some paint on there. Rinse off, dry a little bit of the water off, and then maybe just do a little bit of dampening here underneath that, just so it stays damp. Then maybe we'll go in for some more dark, maybe some of that purple and brown and blue and maybe some green. Then we dry off, use the damp brush with a little bit of water in it and just kind of, there we go, dampen it down. Now let's start moving into our medium blues. Kind of go up in here, get a little bit up in there too. Then we're going to start leaving some white paper there for some crashing waves coming in. Then some greens. Leave more Okay, and then as you get closer, your white paper is going to get larger, the thicker, closer you are, the thicker the white paper is going to get. Those lines in the paper are going to get wider as you get closer until you get like here. And that's it. Then you go in with some water and paint and splash. Splash everywhere on the paper in the water area. Maybe get some more blue, some blue, just blue. And then do some highlights here and there. Skim across. Then you can do some lines like this, just to give yourself a little bit of that movement of the water back and forth. And that is really looking good. I think that's fine. And look, we used all different colors. We could even add in a little bit of more, the green there, everywhere. A little bit of the green. Okay. If you think you did too much splashing and you want to lift up a little bit, you use a tissue and you can lift up a little bit of the splashing here and there. And then let's do our sky. Sky is going to be the same color. Let's keep the sky light. Just a touch of that blue and then just go back and forth with your brush like so. Then you go in with your orange, just a touch of orange on the horizon line. We always do our horizon line with a little bit of orange. The only thing with this here is you 
you're better off letting this dry 100%, but again, you can see I'm going for the gusto here. I'm sort of breaking my rules, I told you, to let it dry. Let it dry. Don't try to do this at home like I'm doing here. There we go. So I did that orange line across the horizon line. It could give you problems, so you're better off letting the ocean, the distant horizon line of the ocean dry 100% before you go in and add your orange horizon, sky horizon line there. But I think that looks fine. So here again, we talked about, hey, we're asking ourselves, how do we mix colors? We showed here right in this ocean, in the seascape style composition, we used all of our blues. We used a little bit of purple even too. We use a little bit of purple there, and if I put some there, I'm gonna put over there, and a little bit over there and there. So I always wanna mix my colors everywhere. So if I put a little bit of purple, I want it everywhere, not just in one spot. That's a really big, helpful hint with watercolors, is if you put one color one place in your painting, you have to put it a little bit here and there everywhere. Even if it's disguised as just a little tiny bit, it'll still, work for you. Okay, there we have it. A beautiful ocean scene, not too complicated, but we did say we used lots of colors. Okay, we'll be right back. We're going to start another composition. We'll use some different colors. Maybe we'll go with some more warmer colors. Maybe some reds and some uh, golds and browns. Maybe we'll use more of the really warmer colors, the reds. I think we, we'll do some flowers maybe. Let's do some flowers with some reds maybe and uh, we'll have a little bit of fun doing some warmer colors. We did mostly cool here with the blues and the greens. Um, so let's take a break. It's good to take breaks. I um, mention that all the time. Take yourself a break every once in a while when you do your painting. Maybe you do a break in between when you're doing this painting. You maybe take a break in between. So you do half of this, take a break, finish it. Do this one, take a break, finish it. You know, maybe do your ocean first, then take a break, then do your sky. Good. And then we're going to move on to this next section over here. So we'll come right back. I'm just going to take a quick break and uh, we'll get started. Okay, it's Chris, and yes, we're back again. We're going to do another painting. We talked about how we did some cooler looking colors, right? We did some greens, a lot of greens and, and uh, blues for both of the uh, tree and the bushes. And then we did the ocean, which is a lot of greens and blues. So we did cooler, cooler sides of the palette, a cooler palette uh, for these two compositions. So now we just covered these over with some, after I dried it with a blow dryer, I covered it over with a, a piece of um, printer paper after I dried it with a blow dryer because you know I didn't want to smudge anything by putting paper over it. So that's something to really keep a um, mindful um, track of is your paintings when, you, when you're working on them and then you're going to maybe cover them with something. Um, you'd want to definitely let them dry or, or blow dry them a little bit to make sure that they're dry enough so that you can put something over them like this. If you want to work with like a, a large sheet of paper and then break your sheet down into sections with your tape like we did here. So that's just something to keep um, keep watch of. And um, so let's start out. We'll do this next. Let's do some flowers. How about that? And um, what I'll do is let's do just a simple... I'm going to do a vase in the very, very bottom of the picture here, like so. And as I do my vase, I'm going to make a little bit of the flower there, like so. So this is our vase here. Then we'll do some uh, flower shapes. So I'm just going to do a nice, beautiful like a red flower shape. Some red flowers in this vase here. And then there's going to be some green leaves here and there. Like 
that and then there's maybe another couple of leaves here so you can kind of see I'm just doing some simple um, leaf shapes here like so and then maybe another couple over here another couple of leaves over here and another one there that one didn't come out so great let me uh, take my kneaded eraser and just if you have a leaf or something that doesn't come out that great you just erase it with your kneaded eraser so here we have that one and then this one here I'll do like that that looks pretty good and then I'll just do a couple more petals of flowers within this flower here just to kind of give me an idea of what I want to uh, have this look like as far as the red flower shapes and the petals of the flowers that looks pretty good and then maybe over here we're gonna have just a a bit of a color on the left right side over here and then maybe over here we'll just do another like that okay and another bit of green there okay so we did our vase down here we did our main flower shape here with petals and then we did our green leaves we have some green uh, leafy um, forms over here and up here and that should be fine now we're going to again dip our uh, paper towel in some water and then just clean our palette a little bit. I get some wet paper towel to kind of get that started. Then I take another bit of paper towel, drier paper towel with no water, and then just, just do that quick. Okay, one, two, three, done. And we're going to go in with our Simply Simmons. And let's work out some colors onto our palette first. So we said this is going to be more of a warmer, a cool, a, a warmer painting. Let's do our red over here. This looks like kind of an alizarin crimson type of red or a, a rose matter type red, you know, kind of that cool red. And then we're going to have a warmer red. So let's go with this orange over here, orangey red. That's kind of like a cadmium red like that so I'm already mixing my colors out onto the palette as you can see not too much water a little bit of orange medium orange here and some brown and then why not go with a little bit of some black here and brown for some interesting darks we want to put a couple interesting darks and then let's get some greens going here. So if I my palette's getting a little bit drier now, I go in, spritz. I spritz my palette with some, get some color. There we go. Better, better. And uh, medium green. That's light green, medium green here. Dark green here. So now I have my three greens and then even some yellow up here. Lots of variety here and again we're talking about mixing colors. How do we mix colors? Lots of colors. If you're going anything with green you have three you have almost four choices but basically three choices. Dark green which is a cool green kind of like a viridian green. Then you got your uh, middle green which is kind of like your olive green and then your uh, light green. And then you can also put some yellow in there. And then for our reds, cadmium red, pretty much a cadmium red here. Lizard and crimson or rose matter over here, this one. And then uh, orange and brown for a little bit of an earthy kind of feel. And a touch of black too over here, but just a little bit of black. That black it is really powerful when you're using this black in this palette the prang palette be really careful when you use the black only use a little tiny touch of it because it really goes a long way so let's get started here and then we want some blue too here 
let's mix a little bit of a blue there. Prussian blue. That looks good. Okay, I think we have plenty here to start with. Let's start with our greens. Might as well. Let's start with our greens here. And have fun with this. Just get your greens out there. Darker greens maybe, so you have a touch of brown in there. There we go. Pick up a little bit of brown in there. A really fun thing about watercolor, I meant to tell you this, this is really important, really important, good good tip here with watercolor is watercolor does a great job just by putting it onto the paper and letting it kind of flow around and do its own thing. So here you can tell I'm not overworking it, I'm just kind of putting it down and just pressing it down onto the paper and then letting it mix around and do its thing. And. Uh, I added a little bit of purple in there too. So we're really using a, lots of variety here. Um, let's do some more greens. Now let's use some very light greens up here, like so. And then we're going to leave white paper for the vase. Maybe some So I'm just doing a little bit of blue across here for the shadow. Okay, so I'm leaving lots of white paper on the vase down here. Let's not cover that over with paint. Let's leave that white paper. And then let's come over here. We're going to do some more greens over here. We did lots of greens with mixtures, different kind of green browns mixed with greens. Up here, yellowish greens. Let's do that one up here like that, more of a yellowish green. So again, I'm just mixing and mingling all those greens like that. A little bit of red mixed in there too. And the reason I put a little bit of the red in there is because we're going to do this red flower. So if we can mix some of the red flower colors into the leaf forms over here, we'll be better off. It'll kind of harmonize the painting a little more. And uh, we'll see how that turns out. But I think I will be happy with the result when I see that the colors are all mixing and mingling together. Like that. Okay, now let's do some reds for our leaf forms here. Petals, petals of our flower. And I think the key here is just to kind of keep the flow of things going with the shapes of the petals of the flower, like that. And And then what I'll do is I'll make sure that I um, that I 
mix some light pinkish colors too, right? I don't want to go all dark red. Let me go with some light pink colors. And I also want to leave some white paper in there too, right? You, can you see how I did that? So if you can leave some white paper in the flower petals, and then you can go back in and add some really, no water at all, just you dry off your brush. So you would rinse off your brush, rinse off your brush, dry your all the water off your brush onto the paper towel or your tissue and go in and get straight paint with no water. And you can even get some more darker darks here with those really rich red, beautiful red colors there. Can you see that? And then you have your white paper and then when you rinse off your brush again and you dry off the paint uh, the water then you can blend in and do some really light pink so you're having almost three tones or tonal values on this really really you know the really rich red there you can see then you have some of that light pink color as you try to get a variation there dark red light pink and then some white paper too and then you have lots of variation. And then we'll go in and we'll mix some more greens again. And we'll try to start getting some more petals in here. I mean, uh, leaf forms in there. So there we have it. And if you lean into your paint again, don't worry about it. Watercolor is messy, I have to say that. Watercolor medium is very messy. So if you get smudges on your paintings, just leave them in there. They look good, actually, because it's just more variety. More variety. People like to see a lot of variety. Nothing more boring than just one color on the whole painting. Then I take a little bit of water and splash a couple spots like that. Not too many, just a few. Good enough. And some lighter greens maybe over here, some of that fresh looking lemony yellow green up here. So you have a leaf that's dark, you have a leaf that's lighter green up there. And then you have another medium. And if you have a big puddle somewhere on your painting, no worries, you take your tissue and you just lift up like that. And there we have it. Look at that, a gorgeous I'm just going to do a couple stems here. And I just did a couple stems. And you can do a little bit of that black mixture with some blue and purple. And just put a couple darks in here and there. Where you would think the shadows would be. So you, you could say, okay, let's pretend the light's coming from here. Like that. So you could put some of these darks on the shadow sides over here. Maybe even a couple over here. Like that. And if it looks too dark, take it, dry off the brush, and then just lift up a little bit of paint. Okay, I think you're going to have a fun time with this uh, beautiful red flower here. We just um, left it with vibrant, beautiful reds. The 
This red here is kind of like a, a lizard and crimson or a rose matter. And then you have this one here, which is kind of like a cadmium red. So we use that over here. And then we just mix some other colors and of course our greens over here. So you'll go back and try this a few times. It's a lot of colors and no sense in, you know, I've been painting for a long time, for 15 years or more. So I'm used to all my paint colors. And when you do this, you're starting out, you're more or less in the beginning phases of your watercolor painting. Don't get overburdened with things, but just remember, add lots of variety of your colors out onto your palette first and get them out there. And then just as you're working, you just move them over here. You just take them and use them and try to use all the colors that you put onto your palette first. Then you, you bring them into your painting and you put them there. Whereas if you're just painting and you're not mixing out on your palette first, your tendency is just going to kind of, it's going to be to just use one or two colors here and there. So here we show you how you take all your colors in the beginning before you start this painting, this composition. You get all your greens out there. You get your reds out there. You get some orange and some browns and some blues, even in purples, for some shadowing colors. And then it's all on your palette over here, pre-mixed, ready to go. And then when you start painting, you have everything all ready to go. And you just know, oh yeah, I gotta use my two reds. I gotta use my greens over here. I gotta use my blues and my purples for some shadow colors and greens. I'm gonna use lots of greens for my flowers and leaf forms and so forth. So I kind of think you see how that works. And I know you're gonna have a great time doing this type of painting. You can do lots of these. You can do them in different colors, purple. Maybe you make a purple flower. Maybe you do like a um, orange flower. Um, you know, you can mix it up and do different things. Have fun with your colors, mix them up. But again, lots of variety, lots of colors. Use lots of mixtures of colors and you'll be, you'll be fine. Okay, I'll come right back and we'll do our final painting here. And we'll do something else too in the uh, warmer color uh, style, okay? All right, we'll be right back. Okay, everybody, let's get started again. Now we're gonna do another warm painting. So we did, again, two co cooler type paintings over here. Uh, we did uh, an ocean and some trees and some sky, lots of blues and greens. And then here we did some flowers with some reds, beautiful reds with some greens, complementing the uh, red uh, colors here for this flower with a, a vase here. Now let's do, um, I thought maybe do like a city scene. Maybe we'll do a city scene here. Let's just, uh, I think I'm going to do, um, we'll do a sunset type of thing. So I'm going to do maybe like a bridge over here. And then maybe there's a, so here I'm just going to draw about one third, one third up from the bottom. So if we have a, a rectangle here like so, this is a rectangle we're working within one-third, two-thirds, three-thirds to the top. So I'm going to go one-third of the way up and I'm going to draw like what seems like a bridge here. Maybe we're going to do an arch for the bridge like that. And then we'll do some buildings over here. With some spires. And I'm just drawing it very loosely, a couple spires on both sides, and then maybe a roof in the middle here. And then we'll have another. We'll have another spire and, and uh, pinnacle up here to the right. So this is sort of. Gonna be an interesting city, city type scene, and I'll make some more buildings over here in the distance. Like so. So I basically just put the outline of a city here, the skyline, and then we're gonna make this all dark and then some sunset sky. We'll kind of do this in two washes. We'll sort of, let's get the sky, sky washes in first. Let's use our square brush. We often use our Princeton Art and Brush Company flat brush here. 
to get big, large washes on our paper. So let's do that. We'll use our square brush on this painting. So we're going to go in with our red, and we're going to, since we're going to do a lot of darker colors in here, we'll use our reds just like this. Over here, like so. We don't have to clean up the palette at this point. I'll put a little bit of black in there too. Make this kind of darker, a little bit of orange. So it's going to kind of be an orangey type red, sunset kind of thing. And then up here we'll maybe make some orange and some yellow. So I think that looks pretty good. So let's do our sky wash first and we'll just cover the whole paper. So we're going to use orange, yellow here, and then our two reds here. Like that. And that should be fine. And then what we'll do is let's pre-wet our paper so that we get a really nice wash on here. So I pre-wet the paper by just taking a damp brush, a wet brush actually, and just go right across the whole paper just like this with a wet brush. I dip it into the water, fresh clean water, has to be fresh clean water. So you have to change your water often when you're painting watercolors and this is one time you definitely have to change your water, make sure you change the water to fresh clean water and then you cover the whole paper with fresh clean water not flooding it overly excessively just enough to cover the whole paper damp dampen it up if too much water is flooding down on the bottom of the paper you can just lift it up with some tissue on the sides and stuff like that and then now we're going to go in with our colors now the colors are going to be the golden colors are up here first maybe a little bit of blue and purple blue and purple up in the top of the sky like that and then let's get lots of color on there lots of color up here too get some dark darks up there and then just kinda let it flow on down just like that orange that purple and blue up top and you can you can kind of mix as you go have fun with this get a nice mix of colors and then just slowly fade this on down like so going to dry a lot lighter so don't be afraid to go dark with this lots of paint okay and that's all you have to do is you get that first wash of color on there like so the first glazing this is going to be in the um, technique and method of the glazing technique where you just go over with your first wash like this and then you have to let it dry 100% and then you come back over and do the, your dark washes over the top of that so I'm just going to lift up a little bit of that paint like so just to okay and you can see how I did that lots of reds and golds and yellows a little bit of purple and blue up top on the top of the sky and that should be fine let's let this dry so we'll take a quick break we're going to come back in like 10 minutes once this dries, 15 minutes. You can always use a blow dryer too to blow dry this and then uh, we'll come back and do our darker, you know, darker washes over the top, which are going to be our buildings and, and our spires. Okay, be right back. All right, everybody, we are having a lot of fun here. So we did our um, first wash here, our first glazing on our cityscape. This is a gorgeous scene of some sunset and buildings and spires on a city scene with uh, some archways here and bridges and all kinds of cool stuff. Let's get our darks in now. So we did our first wash is like a medium tone wash, a medium tonal value wash. Like, you know, not super dark, but, you know, we've got some good colors on here. Some reds, some oranges, yellows, a little bit of blue and purple up in the top of the sky here. Now let's get our darker darks in here to get going. So that's going to be some black and we'll use some browns so you want to mix some really good uh, darks here some blue and purple so you got some blue some purple 
and you just kind of mix it all over here blue purple brown a little bit of red in there so you want to kind of mix everything that you mixed up top in the sky and everything in there too and some browns like that some blue dark blue purple dark blue red you want red too in there okay now we're gonna have some darks let's do some we'll do our spires with our flat brush like that then we're gonna do this like so so you can just have fun with this you're using your flat brush your square brush like that and you can get all your great architecture with your flat brush here look at that that looks good and you can go different ways with your brush you don't have to go all one direction and then you can kind of see we're gonna leave some of those broken bits of paper like that that gives it a little bit of interesting uh, effects there but don't forget this is mostly darks on this so when you're doing this you're not going to leave um, many lights maybe a few lights here and there and we're using nothing but really thick dark paint right you're not using any watery paint here this is your second glazing over the top of your first glazing so that's what you remember is you're not when you go over with your second glazing like we're doing now um, you're just going over with I'm going like like this to get some a little bit of the feel of like uh, windows but you're using straight paint pretty much you're not using much water at all now here over here in the distance let's make these a little lighter so you just rinse your brush and then you just take a little bit up here maybe and just or maybe down here where it's a little better more like warmer colors here like that you just make these a little lighter like that can you see how that's a little bit lighter so these are the buildings in the distance they're a little bit lighter in tonal value and I make little tiny things here like little, little marks on the paper just to give some details and that'll be a shadow there and I'm telling you you, you can really have a lot of fun with this the uh, glazing technique I'm trying to use a little bit of a darker wash on the top of the building sections here but I'm gonna leave the I want that to be a little more darker at the tops can you see how I did that there but you don't want to do all of it dark because you want to kind of make that look like it's further in the distance that way further out so whenever you want to make something look further in the distance you make it lighter and cooler too so I should have added some more blue in there maybe I should have added more blue or purple in there to make it look further in the distance cooler and then we have that and we do some of these little small details here and there and then we can make these a little more like that we can shape these up a little better can make some more spires over here like that and then if you want to get a little more detailed you could take your um, prang brush that comes with your prang set you can get your darks and you just you could do a little more pointier You can just get a little more pointier on the buildings a little bit. 
and if something is a little bit you can do a little bit of touch-ups there if you want to make the building you want to shape the building a little different like that you could add a little more and I think that looks pretty good I think you'll agree that you can really get some very nice effects with the glazing technique and using darks too. Look how much we went pretty dark here. And I just made that a little darker over here. And another little bit of dark shadow there. And maybe a couple more details up here. Maybe there's some, some lights up here on the bridge. Like that. I wouldn't go with too many details, but you can add some here and there. But I think that's good. All right, so we have completed it. Another fun, warmer style um, painting here. We use the glazing technique, which of course is light wash first, and then our dark wash over the top. We use lots of warm colors, reds and oranges and yellows, the golden sunset kind of feel. So I hope you've had plenty of fun here on this video. We'll, we'll kind of just lift up our... These two are upside down, of course. So in the beginning of the video, you saw the finished painting in the beginning of the video. So we're going to actually set this up so you'll see this in the beginning. And um, you'll be able to kind of, you know, see what each one looks like individually uh, at the very beginning of the video. And then we'll, you know, as we go through the, this tutorial, you'll kind of see how you do each one differently, different colors, different mixes, but the main theme of this video was definitely, this tutorial was mixing colors. Use lots of colors and you'll never go wrong, and you just keep it safe, you know, with trees and grass and things like that, and oceans, you're sticking with your blues and your greens, and then here with this beautiful red flower, you're going with the warm red colors, and then here you're going with a nice beautiful warm sunset color uh, with the oranges and the reds and the yellows. And then you use some darker washes here on the second glazing to get your uh, silhouette of your uh, distant um, and your skyline. Okay, we're going to see you on the next video. Happy painting, everybody. Thanks so much for all the comments. And uh, please subscribe if you haven't, so this way you come back and we're going to be painting again in just a few days. Uh, or next week, we're always making new paintings constantly, so whether we're doing flowers or glazing technique with cityscapes or oceans and boats and trees, whatever it is we're painting. It's everything is watercolor, so you'll always be learning new information on watercolor, and that's the exciting part. You'll always be uh, keeping yourself up to speed and up to date on all the watercolor techniques and methods you need to to get ahead and get uh, yourself, uh, you know, progressing in your painting, and you'll be much happier when you're doing better paintings. That's the main thing here is I want to make sure you're learning all the key um, fundamental things in watercolor so that you can create beautiful paintings and you'll stay excited with it and you'll keep going and keep painting. Uh, I don't want anyone to leave, uh, leave behind watercolors. Stick with it. You'll have a lot of fun with it and you just get better all the time. Every time you put in a new painting, you're going to be better and you're going to learn more each time you pick up the brushes and the pencils. So that's my uh, goal here is uh, so you can have lots of happy fun with watercolors. And uh, we'll see you on the next video, everybody. See you soon. Bye-bye.